All right. Bowl season. It's finally here. I know. I know. Crazy, right? <laughs> and we got both bowl season and the FCS semifinals. We're going to talk all about that in this video here today. Uh, technically today. Um, you're going to be seeing this on Tuesday, so you know, it is what it is. Um, so there's a, there's only a couple things here, really. Um, I'm going to go over six games here instead of, you know, trying to go over a bunch of bowls and stuff like that. Because that, that's just, that takes up a lot of time to go over a lot of bowls. And really, I'm only intrigued by the first couple days of bowl season because, again, there's an FCS semifinal on Friday night. And, of course, there's an FCS semifinal on Saturday. So, yeah. So, going to be beyond intrigued for everything that goes on on Friday and Saturday. Of course, if you're thinking about, you know, the um, Frisco Bowls, you know, because there's two of them this year. I'm not going to talk about those or some of these other bowls, you know, like, uh, like the Bahamas Bowl. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, so, a lot of these early bowls. Involving, you know, group of five teams. I'm not going to talk about, but the but these four bowls specifically, I will. I will talk about them because um, we're we're gonna. All four of these matchups are much more intriguing to me than some of these other ones. So, um, so and the and these go in great tandem with the FCS semifinals. So if you're having a football withdrawal like you did last week, then come on back. Come on back. We we got we got six games for you, and to start us off, we got Quinn Ewers or however you say his last name. Ewers, Ewers, Ewers. I I, I don't know. He he goes back to Texas. He initially committed to Texas in 2020, withdrew his commitment, went to Ohio State, finessed Ohio State for like fifty thousand dollars. And then Texas lured him back with, like, I don't know how much money. I, I genuinely don't know what's going on here because, uh, you know, it is what it is. So, Quinn Ewers, or however you say his last name, he's going back to Texas. I don't know what that means yet because, again, there's just many problems with Texas, you know, as we've seen throughout the year. 2021 so i don't know what 2022 is going to look like that's really the biggest thing that has come up from the end of last week coming into this week uh, i don't have anything about coaching changes or conference realignment or anything like that there all of that's already been out the window as we get closer and closer to the end of the year so First game I want to talk about, first bowl game I want to talk about anyway. Let's go over these bowl games first before we go over the semifinals of the FCS. And that is the Cure Bowl. That is going to be like a 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 Central on Friday night. And it's going to be an interesting battle. The Shants have Grayson McCall. He's been battling through some injuries and stuff like that. He, he was, at least in like early November, I think. And, you know... Him and that connection of Isaiah Likely, along with Shamari Jones, had, I mean, this chance offense has been pretty damn good this year. A damn lethal offense that, you know, beyond, beyond just being a 10-win team in the Sun Belt, you know, they, they, they've really competed. I mean, the Sun Belt has really, really stepped it up. They've stepped up their game this year, and I gotta tell you, that this is going to be very, very intriguing. Um, I know I know App State, who beat Coastal and went to the Sun Belt Championships, taking on Western Kentucky, but I, I don't know when that game is, so not going to talk about it. Um, so The reason why this one is intriguing is because of their opponent, the MAC champion, Northern Illinois, the Huskies, with Rocky Lombardi at quarterback, Jay Ducker, who has over 1,000 yards on the season, Trayvon Rudolph receiving, you know, and both these defenses have intriguing guys. Uh, for the Huskies, their leading tackler is C.J. Brown, and he's got a lot of tackles this year. Of course, for the Shants, you know, Silas Kelly and Josiah Stewart anchor this Shants defense, and the Shants clears, you know, are trying to get their first bowl victory ever, and could Can Northern, Can Northern Illinois prevent that? We will see, because again, 
this coastal offense is lethal. Defense, we've watched his defense at times this year, and, you know, not much, not much has come from this defense when I've watched him, you know. I mean, it's it's solid enough, the Chance Clears defense, but it wasn't solid enough to get them back to where they were last year. You know, they, they lost two games. Remember that. Of course, Saturday, 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 if you want, a, if you want an ABC triple header of games, we got you. We got you covered here because, oh my goodness, three bowl games on Saturday on ABC. Going to be one hell of a night. You know, gonna be one hell of a day when it comes to college football, when it comes to these bowl games, when it comes to top tier teams, you know, playing in some damn good games. And to get us started off, we have the Celebration Bowl, the HBCU National Championship. Of course, I was gonna talk about this game. Why would I not? You, it's usually one of the first bowl games to kick us off, and. I gotta tell you, Deion Sanders and company, they have they have turned the culture of Jackson State around. The SWAC champions, they have just been dominant on defense. They have a pretty good offense with Shadur Sanders leading the way at quarterback. You know, just I mean this is a this is a Jackson State team that has only lost one game. And that was the Louisiana Monroe, and they only and Louisiana Monroe only had 12 points. You know, I mean Jackson State only scored what seven in that game. So I mean, you know, it is what it is. <sighs> Excuse me. And they also and the thing is about Jackson State is that they also have some pretty damn good defenders on defense. Linebacker Aubrey Miller, also James Houston. If you did not watch the SWAT championship like I did, you know, you notice that James Houston is a playmaker. Again, that again that play that I I swear just happened in like two seconds and was just absolutely crazy, in which James Houston picked off Jawan Pass and took it into the end zone. You know, again, crazy stuff. And they're trying to close out a magical season with an HBC National Championship. Yes. Yes. Can Jackson State do it? They got a tough task in front of them. They got a tough task in front of them. South Carolina State. Now, despite the record, don't look at the record and say, like, oh, well, yeah, this South Carolina State team is pretty bad. But yeah, they're 6 and 5. Yeah, we get that. <laughs> but, as we know, what has happened to the MIAC over the past, you know, couple seasons and stuff like that, um, yeah. South Carolina State has played a much tougher schedule than Jackson State. I'm sorry. I'm just say, I'm just stating facts here. It's much tougher. I mean, the o- the only other team that that played Jackson State close, you know, Florida A&M, they played South Carolina State. And South Carolina State, unfortunately, they did lose that game. But hey, it is what it is. And this is a team, you know, for the Bulldogs. It's kind of inconsistent under Buddy Pugh. You know, they, they got a running game of Kendrell Flowers, but he hasn't really done too much. You know, he's not a thousand yard rusher or anything like that. You know, Corey Fields Jr., he's got a shaky, shaky stat line. He's only he's got like ten interceptions, but he's got like nineteen touchdowns passing. So it's kinda shaky, you know, on the offense. But if there is a saving grace, that is the Kobe Durant on defense, the Miak defensive player of the year. And, I mean, he, he's definitely going to be a intriguing defense back to go up against, you know, these receivers for, you know, Jackson State. So, this one is going to be one hell of a fight down in Atlanta. Always a good time to watch to start the bowl season. And then BYU and UAB in the Independence Bowl. I know, we were all expecting UTSA to be here, but there was some confusing shenanigans in which... I have no idea what happened. I, I really don't. Like, apparently, UTSA either picked their bowl or ESPN picked their bowl. So we don't know what happened here. And, you know, there, of course, BYU was angry. They didn't get a better matchup than this. They didn't get a New Year's Six. Again, you shouldn't have lost to Boise State. That that was a killer right there. But, hey, Kalani Stake, 
he has an extension up to 2027. And, you know, despite all these injuries that BYU has, I'm looking for Jaron Hall and Tyler Algier to have a field day. You know, it's not it's not going to be easy, though. Of course, Bill Clark, he's, he's probably just happy to be there because, I mean, UAB has really turned it around. Definitely one of the better football stories over the past five years or so with the way they come back. Mostly dominated Conference USA. Obviously, they didn't win it this year. You know, and they're just happy to be there. You know. No Dwayne McBride either, so he's injured. So Dylan Hopkins, he's going to have to step it up. We talked about him a little bit before, and again, they played a magnificent game against UTSA a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, defense failed them at the end of that game. So, you know, UAB, BYU, interesting matchup. I know BYU is only favored by like seven points, so yeah, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know how all this is going to go, you know. So BYU cannot, they can't overlook UAB, and UAB can't get rough shot all over BYU, so we'll see. And then the LA Bowl, the first ever LA Bowl, the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, remember. Um, so BJ Baylor and Oregon State taking on the Mountain West champions. Utah State, Logan Bonner, Devin Tompkins, a lethal combination, you know. I mean, we're talking, this is a passing attack for the Aggies that has just been on point all season long. We saw them at about West Championship just putting up numbers, putting up statistics that were crazy against San Diego State. And we'll see if the Beebs can hang with this passing attack. Of course, you know, um, Utah State they 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 they're not they're not they're not difficult on defense. They they play deep. They play defense out there. They play BYU tough. They play other teams tough. They played San Diego State tough. Obviously, you know, they played other teams in their conference pretty tough. You know, there's just been a couple of inexplicable losses for the Aggies, but hey, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. And this one is going to be one hell of a way to cap off the night. So, now we move on to the FCS semifinals, and semifinals have four teams, you know, that I think a lot of people expected to make it. I think a lot of these Teams were expected to make it, with the exception of maybe Montana State. You know, but hey, it is what it is. We got our four final teams, and South Dakota State, Montana State. It is going to be a sellout, I believe, for Montana State. I believe that game has already gotten sold out as far as tickets and stuff are concerned. So Tommy Mellett, Isaiah Fonse, and the Bobcats defense are trying to go all the way. Uh, and I, or rather, is it Malat? I think it's Malat. I, I, I think I mispronounced his name. Cause, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce these names anymore. And you know, this is a Bobcats defense that's imposing. I mean, they whipped San Houston State. They whipped other teams that they played this year. You know, and I mean, of course, the Jacks. You know, they have a intriguing, intriguing offense. Chris Oladukun. You know, Jackson, Jackson Janky, maybe Isaiah Davis and Pierre Strong are going to, you know, run in tandem. I'm not sure about Pierre Strong. He, he did have a concussion, so we'll see if he plays this week. Uh, so this is going to be intriguing to see, you know, because I mean, both these defenses are good. We know this. We know this. We've seen their playmakers on defenses before, you know, like Trey Anderson and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Going to be intriguing matchup. And then the Friday night matchup, I, I don't know why I didn't put this one first, as Cole Johnson, Kirk Smitty, Dukes, and they're looking to they're looking to finish. This is, a, this is also a rematch of the last time. Remember the last time we saw James Madison in North Dakota State play? Yeah, 2019. You know, the FCS Championship in 2019. That was a beautiful day. I mean, I remember that day clearly. It snowed that day. I got some donuts that morning. Um, and then I came back, and what a game we saw between Trey Lance and Ben DiNucci. But now we see them again in the Fargo Dome. The only one of the only teams who's eliminated North Dakota State from these playoffs and stuff like that is James Madison. You know, and I think they're the only team that has done it in the Fargo Dome too. So. So we'll see 
you know, what these two physical defenses can do against each other. Because, I mean, both these defenses were absolutely dominant in their quarterfinal games. So, we're going to see if Cam Miller can do a little bit more. I'm not sure if Christian Watson's coming back, of course. You know, there's also the backs for the Bison, you know. So, what can Matt Entz and company dial up against this Duke's high-flying offense, the passing attack? I don't know yet. I really don't. We will see because this is this might be the last matchup these two teams have for quite some time, you know. So we will see what this entails. I cannot wait for it. I cannot wait for the semifinal, and it's and it's a late one on Friday night. So be sure to be sure to adjust your calendars and stuff like that because it's after the Cure Bowl. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work because they put the start time at like 8:15. 915 on the East Coast, so I don't I don't know how that's gonna go. So we'll see. We will see everybody. So with that being said, that's gonna do it. I'm gonna see you all once again. You know, you know if you're watching, you know, Tuesday, you know, or maybe later in the week or something like that, you know, check out the rest of my content throughout the week, and I'll see you again soon. And we'll see you late Saturday night to recap the FCS semifinals and some of these bowl games. At least the four that I talked about anyway. Take care, everybody.